Hi everyone, Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. Seasonal Affective Disorder is essentially described as a drop in serotonin levels in the body, most likely the result of your, your body's mechanical clock, your circadian rhythm being disturbed through, as the season changes, the lack of light entering the body uh, and that we're exposed to causes knock-on effects, one of which is the melatonin levels in our, in our blood, which help us to sleep, decreases, gets messed around with, that then affects our sleep. Basically, it's a three-way thing. You've got circadian rhythm issues, melatonin issues, and a lack of serotonin, or a ser serotonin decrease in the body. Now, what this does to us is, is really quite wide and varied in its knock-on effects, and it does affect an awful lot of people every single year around this time right the way through to around March, April, there is this onset. People find themselves in front of the doctor describing a whole range of symptoms, which we're gonna get into very shortly. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and share these videos with anyone you feel would really benefit from the kind of stuff that we're doing here. Whether it's a review on something, whether it's a skill that we're teaching in the outdoors, or whether it's kind of looking at the mindset uh, and the kind of the take on the mental health aspect of what's involved with spending more time in the outdoors. Mainly focused on the benefits, but obviously today we're looking at, you know, kind of a very common issue, something that thousands of people suffer with every single year and what we can be doing about it. So what can we do about it? Many of those symptoms accumulatively add up to what is then pretty much understood as depression. Now depression's no joke. If you are full on chronically depressed, every single moment of every single day, not just every day, every moment of every day, is an absolute fight to stay in the game. If you look at the inputs, you can then begin to start to understand the outputs. And if you can understand the outputs and the symptomatic side of what's happening, we can of course reverse that, go back to the inputs, hopefully this makes sense, and, uh, and start to address things. So what are the inputs? Well, the inputs are we as people, and I'm guilty of this as well, from the very get-go, our whole psychological makeup towards interaction with the outdoors and the weather therein. Okay, so right now I'm basking in glorious little pockets of sunshine between the trees. The mindset involved here is what I think is a key factor. It's not the only factor because there is a very real physiological thing happening inside us as a result of this lack of sunlight or daylight but it's also the mindset from the get-go the first sign of rain you'll have heard people say oh isn't the weather bad bad weather out there terrible weather it's just weather you could equally say the same when it's far too hot and you're getting absolutely crushed by sunshine and you're you're struggling with the heat the point i'm making is we're demonizing we demonize our weather and so therefore, there are knock-on effects in our everyday lives that go with this. You say, oh, it's bad weather. Apart from the fact that we don't live in the outdoors in the same way anymore. We don't, we're not literally living amongst the trees. We live in a climate control box called a house or an apartment or a caravan or a van. Whatever it is, it's climate controlled. So you're not actually in those elements 24 seven anymore but your mindset is still geared towards if there was a big thunderstorm or high winds or freezing conditions, that could literally kill you. Not the case anymore. You've never had more access to better high quality outdoor clothing. You've never had more access to instant heating, instant boiling water, instant light, instant food so Food source is abundant. Shops are teeming with food. It's never been easier to survive, really. And yet more and more of us are struggling with this. Actually break this down. When the weather is bad, because I think, I, I say, like many other outdoor people, that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. I make sure I get outside every single day. I do my 15 minute headspace walk. This is part of one now, me filming this. But more than that, I make sure that I get out there regardless of the weather. Even spending 15 minutes in poor weather 
is still giving me more daylight, it's still giving me more of that mental well-being, you know, there's kind of benefits that come from that than just sitting indoors looking at, looking at the world through the post box. And it's just really, really important that we, that we try, okay, because I'm guilty of this as well. I might say sometimes, oh, the weather looks awful out there. Then I catch myself and I think, no, I must stop saying that. I'll just say, okay, it's raining. Say what it is, it's raining. So what do I do about it? I put a coat on, problem solved. And that's what we need to be doing because our little ones are learning from us that it's awful weather. We don't go outside and play in the bad weather. Nobody plays in bad weather, we only play. So we're creating a whole, a whole generation after generation of sunshine loving people who cannot cope with the slightest bit of bad weather. And we in Britain are really guilty of this. And I'm sad to say this as a Briton, you know, we live on an island. It's kind of well known that we have poor weather. We have rain, snow, sunshine, high winds in any one given day here in the UK. And yet less and less of us can cope with the very basics of a bit of bad weather. Bad weather. See, I did it just now. We need to try from the offset and change that mindset and change the way we describe it. I'll give you just one example. You're gonna to go to the shops. You put all your nice new high-tech fibers on to walk 10 yards to get in the car, which is climate controlled. You then get to the shopping precinct, wherever you're gonna be, center, and then you put an umbrella up in your high-tech fibers and you pretty much run maybe 50 yards into the shop, climate controlled. You're gonna reverse that process on the way back. So how much exposure to the bad weather did you actually get and I'm talking about in the depths of winter now, and then you're gonna go back indoors. Unless you go back outside and interact with the outdoors, that's your interaction for the day done. And thus we have the problem. If I wanna get onto talking about circadian rhythm, what is circadian rhythm? Your circadian rhythm is essentially described as the process of when, when the sun comes up, you wake up. When the sun goes down, you go to sleep, or you have the urge to go to sleep. Now in the winter, we have less daylight hours and yet our lives and the way we lead them now as everyday humans in today's society doesn't change at all. We don't change our pattern. We don't lay in, we don't, we don't go with what our body's trying to tell us or what our body wants to do. We fight it. We carry on working on the laptop long into the dark hours, long past our, our body's natural clock telling us to go to sleep. And over the period of six months of winter or those kind of, you know, the kind of dark side of the year, it builds up and you get so far out of your rotation, your body doesn't really know what time it's supposed to release the melatonin into your bloodstream anymore. It's all upside down. Think about it. If it gets dark at four in the afternoon and you don't go to bed till 10 at night, it might as well be the equivalent of three o'clock in the morning to your body. It can't cope with it, it can't, it struggles to adjust. And then we find ourselves feeling this horrible low, low energy, overeating, undereating. Okay, there's an urge, there's a natural urge, which is felt by us all upon detecting bad weather, bad weather. And we have this urge to eat high calorie. So our diet changes. We see that across the food industry. You'll see the uptake people in the pubs going for a meal, they'll always finish with the cheese board. The high calorie cheese board starts to come out. There's also the festive period, which is associated with kind of gorging yourself on high calorie treats, these kind of food types. And it all, it all just becomes a massive self-propulsive creature. But we go back to the base issue every single time, what's missing? Daylight. So while there is daylight, guys, while there is an ounce of hope, get outside interact with the outdoors. And if you find yourself getting to the situation where you are feeling really, really low, reach out, speak to a friend, ring the doctor, get an appointment. Don't be shamed into saying, oh, well, it's seasonal affective disorder and I feel like I can't speak up. Because it, if that then leads to depression, which is very real, that's no joke. Understand what's going on with us. Understand physiologically what's happening within us. And before we start to see those kind of onset risk factors, which are described as kind of social withdrawal, the knock-on effects of feeling really low, uh, which are then accelerated again. If you withdraw from your social network or your tribe and your friends, 
you're going to feel even more alone. And the whole thing just goes from there. Right now, Tilly, come. I'm walking Tilly Moo. Okay, it's a blustery day. The trees are dropping their leaves. There's so many beautiful colours out there right now. Uh, every colour in the rainbow. You can see all these different leaves. And I'm just still, still interacting in any way I can. Some of these lovely hawthorn berries, which right now spit the pips out, are good to go. You know, there's still so much to be done in the outdoors right now. We're smack in the middle of fruit and nut season. If you've ever felt the effects of seasonal affective disorder, again, let us know in the comments box below, because it's so important that we talk about this and we normalize it and we, we stop, you know, like I said, demonizing the weather and demonizing those who seem to suffer from the lack of daylight. There's a lot of things you can do about it. There's a lot of treatments out there right now. I'm not advocating the use of sunbeds. If it makes you feel better, whatever it takes, go on holiday. If you can afford it, <laughs> go abroad, find some sun, but yeah, Go speak to the doctor, speak to a friend, speak out, and every opportunity you get, even if it means you've got to walk around like this with your hood up, get outdoors, interact, find out what's out there, see what happens as the year continues. Even right now, if I was looking for tinder and I wanted to start a fire, I know I've not got to go far till I can find this, the tops of the Rose Bay Willow Herb. Okay, this is a fantastic tinder this time of year. Okay, and that really wouldn't take much to get going. And it's just stood up in the wind and there's absolutely stacks of it around here. There's still so many natural world interactions to be had. There's still so many bushcraft related skills you can practice and so many little opportunities and nuggets of gold for us to kind of learn to work with nature, not against it, especially in inclement weather. I think that's where you get tested the most. So, Get outside, if I haven't said it enough today, get outside and make it happen, guys. Come here. Yeah. Where are we gonna go? Which way? Which way? Which way, Tilly? Which way? Off you go then. Go on then, off you go. Choose the direction. Oh, you're following me, are you? I have to make all the choices. Let's go this way. You may notice a friend or a colleague at work start to act differently around this time of year, leading into those really dark months. Some of the things you might typically see them doing are maybe some substance abuse, okay? So you might see them drinking more than normal. You might see them perhaps taking rec drugs recreationally. You may start to see some of the other typical vices we see with people. They start to have a, a massive wobble, okay? You might see them start to change their hair color. They might start to get an increase in piercings or body arts. There may be, I'm not demonizing this stuff by the way, guys. It's just stuff that is well known that we, we kind of reach for when, when we're struggling. They may start to socially withdraw. They may not want to, they go from being quite a social and active person to somebody who just doesn't want to interact with anybody anymore and just be left alone. They may give up playing a sport or something that they love. You'll just see those changes in behavior. And if you've got a friend who starts to go through this, it could be, I'm just saying it could be the fact that we're getting less daylight than ever. Invite them out for a walk, get them outdoors, have a chat, see what's going on. If they trust, trust your version of reality and you can get them to go to the doctor and engage, do so you might just change someone's life. Depression is a serious thing. And as somebody who has certainly experienced it in the past, and if I, you know, if I don't look after myself, could be prone to, to feeling that again, it's something that I take very seriously. Seasonal affective disorder is not a condition that you merely shrug off because it's ongoing and it's every single day. Serotonin, is a, neuro, is a chemical neurotransmitter, okay, in the brain, and it's directly linked to feelings of, of happiness, etc. okay, along with things like dopamine and endorphins. How you choose to get those is totally up to you. Exercise, sex, things like that are all very good ways to, to increase those kind of euphoric feelings, okay, and up, up the, uh, the, uh, the dopamine, um, the oxytocin, okay, levels in the body, etc. But the fundamentals are if your serotonin is dropping badly, you're really gonna, really gonna notice that. 
number of things you can do about it, as I said. Firstly, speak to a friend if it's more serious and you have the presence of mind and you have the, if you're open-minded enough to do so, take yourself to the doctor. Okay, if you're able to do that. If you're not, reach out to a friend, which is probably far easier to start with and go from there. But whatever you do, please don't find yourself locking yourself away in your climate control box for even longer periods of time because it's certainly not going to fix itself or right itself um, through doing that. Pretty soon, even a beautiful green tunnel like this with the light coming through will become barren. All the leaves will have dropped and won't be seeing as much of this sunshine as I get up in the mornings to walk Tilly. And of course, when we return from work, there's still, there's no daylight again. It feels as though you're quite literally getting up to go to work in the dark and coming home in the dark. That's the psychological interpretation. But if you've got a lunch break, use it, get outdoors, make the most of those little pockets of sunshine. And then when you get home in the dark, call a friend, run yourself a bath, do something nice for yourself. Try to take your mind away from the fact that it's cold, dark and miserable with bad weather. Apply that positive growth mindset wherever possible. And the more you actively practice being in the moment, in the here and the now, and, and thinking about the way that you think about things, think about your thought processes, the words that come out of your mouth. There's never been a more important message than the one you tell yourself. I often say that. I use the example, I forget my keys. I get all the way to the car and I go, and you know, and I, I swear at myself because I've forgotten the keys. If I keep talking to myself in such a negative manner, after a while I'm going to believe my own words. Okay, and this can also push you down. So be kind to yourself guys, be kind to your friends, look out for one another, keep interacting with the outdoors, and you'll see it's not such a bad place after all. Thanks for watching, see you soon. Bye for now.